Hello everyone, great to see you today. My name is Pastor Mag, I also go by Pastor Neil, and it's so great that I can be with you this morning. We're gonna unpack today Psalm chapter five, and unpack is a big word. We're actually just gonna skim the surface. This is a great Psalm to dig into. Let's start though by reading a little bit. Again, Psalm chapter five, I'm reading from the ESV. Let's read together. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice, in the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful do not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But I, through the abundance of of your steadfast love will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth, for their innermost self is destruction. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels because of the abundance of their transactions, or transgressions, excuse me. Cast them out for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your pr protection over them, that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as a shield. You know, this is amazing. I love how the psalmist starts off here. He says, give attention to the sound of my cry, O my King and my God. You know, God is king over the universe. He created everything, and through him is there is there hope for creation. And the psalmist is saying here that the God that he is praying to is also his king. He also says, for to you do I pray. You know, we aren't praying to random things or random objects or just hope, just out there floating in the wind. No, we are praying to a God, the creator of the universe, who is our king. And that is an amazing start to this psalm. And then the psalmist is going to have a contrast. He's going to show a contrast between someone who does not follow God, does not care about his ways, and someone who does, someone who is interest, not just interested, but is going toward God and his things. He starts off saying that God is not a God who loves wickedness. He's not a God who is for that. He doesn't love deception. He doesn't love bloodthirstiness and deceit. In fact, he hates evil. He disdains the doing of evil, and he actively works against those who are, are doing evil. And so it's, God is not a God that sits passively by and allows evil to occur. He's actively working against it. And then he looks at how he is different. He says there in verse 7, Through the abundance of your steadfast love, I will enter your house. Wow. He doesn't just do it on his own. He doesn't pull himself up by his bootstraps. He doesn't just work really hard. No, it is through the abundance of God's love he is able to enter into his house. We are the same way. Through Jesus, through trusting his sacrifice as our own, we are able to go into his house. Jesus' sacrifice was one of love, and through that, we are able to be with God. That's incredible. Also, the psalmist says, I will bow down toward your holy temple in fear of you. You know, the fear of God is something we've kind of lost in a lot of ways. We know God is a loving God, and he is a loving God. We just saw that. That's how we get into his house. But he is also a God to be feared. He is God over the, all the universe. He made everything out of nothing. You know, sometimes we'll take Plato as kids, and we'll make a little, uh, little house and maybe some people and whatnot. Well, we are over that creation that we have done, and so is God. He is over the creation that he has made, which is us. And we need to have a healthy fear of him. A healthy fear like electricity, we respect it, but also a healthy fear to realize that just like us could come down with a fist on our creation, so could God at any moment. And yet he loves us. He continues on with that contrast. The psalmist then says that there's no truth in the, in the mouth of the person practicing evil. Their, their innermost self is destruction. They, they flatter with their tongue, but 
ultimately it's lies. Now, why is lies such a big deal? Lying is opposite of who God is. God is a God of truth. Truth is that which corresponds with reality as God sees it. God is the creator. He has seen everything. He knows everything. And therefore, anything that goes a counter to that is a lie. And that's what the psalmist is saying, that the people that that do not love him, that are practicing evil, are practicing lies. It's directly opposite. It's directly in contrast to who God is. But then the psalmist finishes there and, and talks about letting those who take refuge in God rejoice. That God is a shield. His favor, God's favor, is a shield to those that follow him. That is our key today. We see this contrast. We see this contrast today to those who don't love God, that want to just do their own thing, and those that are trying to live their lives according to his word. That contrast is massive in our day-to-day living, in what we think is important, in how we use our resources, everything is impacted by that. Let's be people, let's be people that go into his house through his love, that have a healthy fear of who he is, and that is shielded by his favor. Have a great day, guys. If this was a blessing to you, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and to hit that thumbs up button. Also, we meet every Sunday at 1010 in Custer, South Dakota at Crossroads Church. If you can't attend, we also have a service that we stream right here on this channel at 1010. We hope to see you soon and have a great day.